I have another flashlight review I want to share with you today. Today it is the X1 from Wuben. So this futuristic looking light has features I have not seen in any other light. If you're interested in finding out more about it, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I would like to thank Wuben for sending me this flashlight so that I could share it with you. So as always, what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this light. I'll go over its physical and performance specifications. I'll go over its modes of operation. Then, of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. Before we take a closer look at the Wuben X1 flashlight, I thought I'd share with you what came with it. So the, everything arrived in this box. Now, this box is not the one that the uh, production models will be sent out in. This is a pre-production sent out to flashlight reviewers like myself, but the contents will be the same. I think the first thing I want to show you is this holster that it came with. So something you don't see often with flashlights nowadays is a good, well-made holster, and which can be extremely useful. Let me share with you how this works. So it in like that, has a side release buckle on it, snaps in. I really like this holster. Well, most of it. There's a re there's one comment I'll make on it in a moment. So it is a well-made, well-formed holster. It does have a D-ring. Everything is heavy duty. It has two types of belt loose. Number one, it has a double snap that allows you to take the holster on and off over a belt without taking your belt off. But if you want are looking for something stronger again, you can run your belt underneath this bottom one. It's open. So my only comment on this holster is that the passage through here is not quite wide enough as it is for the thicker gun belts like I used to wear on patrol. There, you can get a, quite a thick belt, but not the thicker ones like I was used to. So I'm not quite sure. I no longer have that gun belt, but I'm not quite sure if it'll fit on newer gun belts or not. All right, let me just remove this from the holster. Again, put the flashlight aside to share with you. What else does it come with? So this is uh, one of the unique features of this light is it does not come with a regular USB Type-C uh, charging cable. This is a fast charge. So USB-C to USB-C, this will take up to a 60 watt charge and this will help charge the two large batteries I'll share with you in a moment in less than two hours from zero. If you use a regular USB-C, it'll still work. It'll just take considerably longer to fully charge the flashlight. It does come with a lanyard. In this case, I can see using this lanyard, it's a nice lanyard. I don't know how often I would use it personally, but with a light of this size, it's nice to have something that you can secure it either on around your wrist or maybe to your belt if you just wanna make sure you don't drop it and lose it on you. Also kind of interesting and really does add to the versatility of this light is this mount for a bicycle. So the mount is very simple around the handlebar, get it into place. And up here, you'll have a small plate. I won't bother taking it out to show you, but a small plate that will screw on to the bottom of the flashlight and the holes are already pre-tapped so that you can put this plate on the bottom and then that slides in and locks into the top of the handlebar mount. So all interesting and uh, versatile options to have with this light. Now, what I can't show with you is the batteries inside of that. And the reason is, is if you look at this light closely, you can see the, uh, the construction is solid aluminum. It's, it's actually a heavy light. I'll give you that in the specs in a moment. But it's assembled with tiny screws all over. And there's the base plate. You could remove it to uh, access the batteries if you need to. But with the warranty on this, I don't think you're likely to, in at least in the short term. But what it does come, what I can show you is it comes equipped with two of these 4800 uh, milliamp 21700 batteries, two of them. That is a lot of capacity in this flashlight. And that, of course, is what's contributing to the weight of this light. So a few of the few key features on this light is the fact that it actually has three Cree XP 70.2 LEDs. That's a lot of lighting capacity right there. And we'll talk about how that works in a few moments time. Another thing, as I mentioned, is the USB Type-C charging port, which is on the side. So you can use regular USB Type-C, or if you have the, the charger for it, you can use the fast charge. All right, so though the last thing I want to mention is this is very unique to me. I have not seen this on any other light, is that it comes with a cooling fan built in. So you can see the cooling fan 
on, actually the fan is on this side, and that's the exhaust port on this side. So it actually draws air in and across through the flashlight. And uh, in practice, when I've been trying this flashlight out, if I put it up into the high or turbo, within 20, 30 seconds, the fan kicks in, and it does a good job of removing a lot of the excess heat. Now, I'll say right up front, this still gets hot really quite hot, but it is at least better than it would be without the fan. So the fan is quite a unique feature and the fact that the fan is waterproof is an extra nice feature as well. All right, let's go into the physical specifications for this light. And as always, all the information I give you now will be in the video description below for your reference. So the overall length of this light end to end is 5.06 inches or 12.8 centimeters. The head width, so at the widest, the flashlight is 2.2 inches or 5.6 centimeters. It does narrow down to an even two inches or 5.1 centimeters. And the height or the thickness of it is 1.1 inches or 2.8 centimeters. Now here's the kicker. 13.4 ounces or 380 grams. That's well over half a pound, three quarters of a pound. That is a heavy flashlight without a doubt. And here's the first comment I want to make on it. It's being marketed at least right now as being an EDC, everyday carry flashlight. It is not, at least in my opinion. Unless you have a reason for carrying a light this big, this is not something you're gonna lug around in your pocket or on your belt. Again, I can see using this in any industrial application. I could have used this on patrol, but as an EDC, I don't think so. I'll tell you what I'm really excited about is using this for is on a bicycle, because when you see the beam that this casts, you'll appreciate what this could be on a bicycle. All right, let's move on to the performance specifications. So as far as the performance specifications go, I'm going to give you the default settings for this light because you can program each step along the way to a certain degree with different lumen settings. We'll talk more about that when we get into the modes of operation. But the basic default settings are eco at 20 lumens or for 220 hours. That's not uh, surprising given the size of those two batteries. Low is 400 lumens for 14 hours. And medium is 1,000 lumens for 5.5 hours, high 2,600 lumens for two hours, and turbo is an amazing 12,000 lumens, which will only last for one minute before the heat protection circuitry kicks it down to 3,000 lumens for another 1.7 hours. It does have a strobe that operates at 3,000 lumens and an SOS which will operate at 200 lumens. Beam distance, so it's not a long distance casting light. It, as you'll see, it is an incredible floodlight, but it's still very respectable at 303 meters and that operates at 23,000 candelas. Now, that far as dust and waterproof, this has an IP55 rating. So I looked that up so that I could explain it because we're quite often uh, accustomed to seeing lights with an IP68 or an IPX8 rating, which are the higher ratings. But what does IP55 mean? It says in the description, limited dust ingress low pressure water jets from any direction. So basically you are still protected from rain or dropping it maybe in a puddle, but you it will not be guaranteed to be submerged underwater for one meter for two hours like you can in the higher ratings. And as far as dust protection goes and that rating to waterproof, I am sure it has every bit to do with the fan ports on either side. Still very impressive, just the same. And it has an impact rating or impact resistance rating of a one meter drop. And I can certainly believe that this thing is uh, heavy duty. <laughs> that's, that's the understatement here, heavy duty at, at the very least. All right, let's go over the basic operation of the Wubin X1. I'll talk about the more advanced programming in a few moments' time. So simple operation, on-off switch, everything is done from right here. What I like about this switch is that it's easy to identify visually, and it's also easy to find tactically with your fingers. So I'm going to turn the light on in its lowest mode, which is Eco. There's a small blue LED showing up in the center of the switch, and that is a battery strength indicator, and it's telling me right now that there is plenty of power 
lift in the batteries. Should that turn to red, it's time to consider charging your batteries. And should it start flashing red, it's definitely time to get a charge into your batteries. I'll also show you now that by turning the light off and pressing it on again, it returns to the last lumen settings as well. So it does have a memory mode. Now to operate this light and work your way up through the different lumen settings, press and hold the button. It'll go from eco up through low, medium and high. So demonstrating low, medium and high and off. And again, there is the memory. Now, if I want to go right down to uh, the eco setting again, I can just long press the button. You can do that at any point and it'll go back down to the eco setting. Now, if I want to access the, the turbo mode, you do that with a double tap, either while the light is on or off. And you can see just how hard my camera has to keep up with that 12,000 lumens of light. If I want to access the strobe, it's a triple tap. And off again. If I want to access the SOS, I first have to go to strobe and then I will triple press again. So go to go to strobe and triple press again and it goes into the SOS mode. Very handy and easy to operate. Turn it off turn it on and it goes back to the last lumen setting. Just before I go through the more advanced programming for the Wubin X1 where you can change the lumen settings for each of the levels, I want to demonstrate how the electronic lockout works for a couple of reasons. One, it has a role to play in resetting the flashlight back to its default factory settings, but also it's especially handy feature. And so unless you're carrying this in the holster that came with it, you want to rest assured that when it's in your pocket, you can't accidentally turn the light on. It would be really bad if it came on in turbo because I think it likely would burn a hole through your pocket pretty quickly at 12,000 lumens. So to operate the lockout, it's press on the button uh, four times quickly, one, two, three, four, and you see the light flashes three times to indicate that it's locked out and won't come on. To disengage the lockout, again, press on the button four times, one, two, three, four, and the light comes on in eco mode. All right, I'll show you how to change the the settings, but first I'll give you what you are actually capable of doing. So you can change eco from the default of 20 lumens and raise it all the way to 400 lumens. Low you can raise from 400 to 1000. Medium you can raise from 1000 to 2000. And high you can raise from 2000 to 3000 lumens. And there is variations at each level because as you alter the lumen setting, it does so in a smooth ramping. And where you'd like the, the light to be, you just release the button and that's what it re will remember for future use. So to do that, and I'll only do it with Eco as you start with the light turned on. Now I'm going to press the button once, twice, and on the second push, I'm going to hold the button down. So once, twice, and you can see that it changes and it's gone all the way up to tell me that it is now at 400 lumens. I can change it back by doing the same thing again, which is to press once, twice, and hold on the second push once, twice, and the light works its way all the way back down to where it was at 20 lumens. So that is the procedure for changing each of the lumen settings and customizing, customizing the light levels for this flashlight. And the last thing I wanna to show to you is how you can reset the flashlight back to its de factory default settings. So in order to do that, you're gonna to have to start with the light locked out. So one, two, three, four, and the light is now locked. And in order to reset the factory, uh, settings again, you're going to press the button three times, but you're going to do it in this sequence. Press once, press twice, and then press three times with about a half second in between. So it's once, one, two, one, two, three, and the light flashes and came back on. And now it is in the factory default settings. Having gone through the physical and performance specifications, as well as the modes of operation for the Wubin X1, there's only one thing left to do. And that of course is to get outside and do some testing. All right, we're doing some nighttime demonstrations for the Wubin X1 flashlight. I'll start by putting it on eco mode. And eco mode certainly illuminates the immediate area around me. If I knew the path I was on and knew of any obstacles, I could probably negotiate it. 
but uh, it's a little bit low, honestly, for doing that with. Let's take it up to low. Now, I'll tell you, this is the level setting I used for this light to walk into the woods tonight because I felt it was more than enough for what I needed. I can see probably 50, 60 feet fairly clearly down the path. And obviously with this amount of flood, I can see all around me to the sides. Let's take it up to medium medium a little bit brighter now for me it's considerably brighter and what i'm seeing is maybe not more penetration deeper into the woods but more flood take it up to high high is impressive i don't think well obviously you wouldn't use it on anything higher than high you wouldn't use it on turbo all too often but it's nice to have so let's just do that put it on turbo that is daylight. I'm illuminating this force brighter than I think I've even seen it in daylight. Now it's been on 10 seconds. Already I can feel the heat coming up and the fans have kicked in. But that is a lot of illumination for this area. Let's take it back down to eco, low, medium, high, and turbo. Very impressive light. Let's close this video out by going over a few of the pros and cons of the Wubin X1 flashlight. So what do I really like about this light? 12,000 lumens. 12,000 lumens of daylight in your hands. And that's the way Wubin is portraying this light is daylight in your hands. And it really is an accurate description. As you saw when we got it outside, this may not cast a long distance, although it's not, it's respectable. It's all about the flood. And there is a lot of light coming out of this. It just illuminates the area. And I think that will be especially beneficial when it comes to mounting this on a bicycle with that little piece that you screw into the bottom. I think it'll be a great use there. Uh, what else do I like about this light? Well, I like the form factor a lot. It fits my hand so well. It is a big size, but it's still more comfortable for me to carry than a lot of the lights of this type of power and range in that they are like Coke cans a lot in a lot of the ways. This just to me has a better feel in my hand. It's secure. I don't feel I'm going to drop it at any time. And that's aided by all the knurling that around the edges. It just, again, feels comfortable at the same time not uncomfortable because the edges are radiused or chamfered so that it's not uncomfortable in my hand i like that it's so easy to find the on off switch on the side of the light you can see it very easily visually but more importantly i can find it with my thumb without having to look at it the fact that it is slightly depressed below the surface means it's a little less likely to be turned on accidentally in your pocket not that i'm likely to carry this in my pocket very very often and if you decide you're going to take my advice and do put on the electric lockout you don't want this coming on accidentally in your pocket so is there anything else i like about it well i have to trust that the fans are doing their job i say that because there's no way for me to know for sure i can say that after about 20 seconds of operation in high or turbo those fans kick in you can actually feel them them running through your hands you can't hear them and you can feel the the air moving underneath the leds so i trust that they are reducing their heat Make no mistake though, this still gets very hot up here, so do be aware of that. So are there any cons for this light? Well, I guess the one thing I might say is its weight. It is a heavy flashlight without question, but that comes with a plus, and that plus is the fact that that weight mostly is due to the fact that there are two 4800 milliamp 21700 batteries in this light. That's a lot of capacity, and that's where all that power and runtime comes from, are those two batteries. Another con, I'm not sure, this is something I'm looking for confirmation on, but in order to access those batteries, you have to remove the four screws holding that base plate on. What I'm not sure about is whether or not that'll void the warranty with Wubin. The instruction manual does say that disassembling the light does avoid or does void the warranty. So I've reached out to Wubin. I'm waiting to hear an answer on that. If it turns out that it does does void the warranty, I'll be sure to include that in the video description below. Uh, speaking of which, I will be putting all the specifications for this light, both the physical and the performance specifications 
specifications as well as of its modes of operation. Especially important was how to reset it to the default factory settings. The manual was virtually useless. I could not understand how to do that. I had to reach back out to my contact at Wuben, who not only gave me a much better explanation, but also created a short video to de demonstrate it to me. And that's exactly what I showed you. So now that I know, it's really simple. It's just that it wasn't written well in the manual. Okay, I think I've given you all the information I can for this light right now. Well, we put all the information I have in the video description as well, uh, video description below as well. And of course, where you can purchase this light from. If you have any questions about the Wuben X1 or any comments, please put those in the comment section of this video. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.